Street Fighter, the best worst film ever made. I love cinema. Film is my favorite art form. Deciding on my least favorite film ever made has been the most difficult assignment I've encountered in my journey as a digital filmmaking major here at the Art Institute of San Antonio, Texas. Once upon a time, an instructor of mine in art history taught me that art is what is created by artists. That said, my criteria for what is a good or bad film weighs heavily on whether or not the filmmakers accomplished their production goals. I'm not sure if these filmmakers truly aimed at creating a camp-laden schlockfest. I feel that their goal was a camp masterpiece, but pitfalls in production prevented it from achieving that ham and eggs glory it wanted. Street Fighter is a 1994 film based on the popular video game series by Capcom. An elite team of government operatives quest to take down the tyrannical regime of crime lord M. Bison, played to camp perfection by the late Royal Julia. He is the saving grace of an adult cast composed of Belgian action star Jean-Claude Van Damme, Australian pop sensation Kylie Minogue, and thespians like Ming Na Wen and Wes Studi, who received an honorary Oscar in 2019 as the first Native American and second indigenous person to be so awarded. Director Steven De Souza landed this gig on the wings of his success as a screenwriter. He'd written Hollywood blockbusters like The Running Man, Commando, 48 Hours, Another 48 Hours, Die Hard, and Die Hard 2 between 1982 and 1992. This helped grant him every screenwriter's dream, to direct. Influential producer Edward Pressman was integral in helping secure De Souza as director. Pressman's pitch to Capcom, who vied to make an American film based on a video game, went well. Capcom executives saw a chance for profit thanks to the sort of studio and investor attention garnered by the Super Mario Brothers movie. Getting the green light was winning the battle, surviving the journey to a Christmas 1994 release date on which Capcom insisted was winning the war. These filmmakers did, indeed, win the war, but it wasn't easy. De Souza is a seasoned screenwriter with blockbusters dangling from his belt. Yes, he is responsible for some of the cheesiest lines in cinematic history, delivered by some of the gods of ham-bone dialogue, Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger among them. But what worked in celebrated cringeworthy moments before fell flat this time around. The dialogue in Street Fighter is not so bad it's good. It's so bad, it's just bad. I expected more from the man who forged a career on embarrassing leading men and women with what they said. Harrison Ford once told George Lucas regarding his dialogue for the Star Wars films, You can write this shit, George. You just can't say it. Casting had its problems. It took an inexcusable amount of time to cast the female lead. They still hadn't secured a lead when De Souza touched down in Bangkok for filming. Next stop would be Australia. It was by the grace of a miracle that they were able to land a local, pop singer Kylie Minogue, to play Cami White. Where did that leave time for rehearsals, much less rewrites? Exactly. It didn't. Much of the dialogue in the film was improvised because of the disastrous shooting schedule, and it shows. Then there was Raul Julia's stomach cancer. Treatment nearly cost him the role, but he persevered. He'd lost a lot of weight and hung by a thread but was able to complete the project inspired by his children's love of the video game. The film is even dedicated to his memory. Van Damme himself was a nightmare to work with. His fervent cocaine addiction caused critical delays. He sometimes wouldn't come out to work. De Souza rushed to shoot various action scenes to make up for lost time. He also had a whirlwind affair with Kylie Minogue. He was an absolute egomaniac and venerable diva. Capcom insisted on him, however, so there was no replacing him despite his behavior. It's a wonder the film ever saw the light of day, but where there's a will, there's a way. The professionalism of everyone else around him carried his weight. Even though I and many others consider this film a grand mess, it grossed $36 million domestically and $66 million worldwide, placing it well over its $35 million budget. This train wreck was a financial success. I love camp and cinema but the camp in Street Fighter, I feel, insults its audience. This isn't camp as art. It's camp because the powers that be say so. 
This style of filmmaking force feeds an audience spoiled ham and sulfur eggs because they can. And brazenly. Oh, what you gonna do? Not see it? Go ahead. Don't. Well, guess what? You will. Out of curiosity. It's like that car crash on the side of the highway. You can't help but stare at the carnage. They knew you'd stare. You'd pay to stare. And many did. It's good to note that De Souza never directed another feature and seems to have dropped off the cinematic radar in 2012. Food for thought. We may say what we want of Street Fighter, but it has its place in cinematic history, and that's why I deem it the best, worst film ever made.